let's look at the September 1958 version of Family Circle, or as it was called then, Every Woman's Family Circle. It cost 10 cents. Minimum wage was $1 in 1958. And we have two ways to get the house you, quote, can't afford. Dinners that come out on time. I found myself and lost 40 pounds by Mitzi Gaynor and your money in your marriage. And here we have a couple people out on the deck of what looks to be like a vacation home. The leaves are still on the trees. There's this blue car here. It's the end of summer. Maybe taking one last vacation. They have fancy dress. She's going out for a night on the town, but don't worry. She's wearing Madas, which was a feminine product. You may hear my cat in the background. She's uh, rolling around right under us. <laughs> She'll fall asleep eventually. And look at this. This is an Ipana ad. Not a whisper of bad breath with new Ipana. And we see her gloved hand held up to her lips. The distinct taste tells you so. I wonder what it tasted like. It hasn't been around since the 70s. We've seen that a lot in a lot of my older magazine videos. Here's the featured people that wrote the articles and the table of contents. Your entry blank for our $100,000 contest. Wow. How would you like to take your family on a vacation trip to Paris at no expense to you? And they also had 800 other big prizes. They were having a Silver Jubilee contest for their readers. They go on to explain that this is coming, this contest, in the October issue of Family Circle, which I have and which I'm planning on making a video with. And Sherry Lewis is, is in it and Victor Borgia. Borgia. And the entry blank for that contest undoubtedly will be in that magazine, unless maybe the person that I got these magazines from, his mother might have cut <laughs> cut it out and um, entered it. Better than aspirin, even with buffering for intense nervous headaches. And this was an ad for Anison. Look at her face. Her little thing. And they have some different medical uh, maladies adds to uh, for products for them. Here's news in medicine and all they really did here was take little quips out of uh, medical publications. The New York State Journal of Medicine, New York Physician, and they would put in a little paragraph about old age complaints, weight control during pregnancy, Quick relief for head lice. What was the quick relief shaving? Let's see. It was advertising a new shampoo. Quell. Quell had just been invented. Unfortunate that my kids never had lice when they were little, but I know that it happens, you know. If your kids go to public school or daycare, and look at that ad, fragile. Handle with Johnson's, Johnson's baby powder, and Johnson's baby oil. And there's a mom with her baby. In an intimate moment because she only has a slip on, so they're at home relaxing with this old Crayola ad. Back to school ideas. First day fun. Well, they're selling Crayola crayons. Look at the mom in her pretty dress. Maybe this little girl's too little to go to school. But they're saying to make the first day of school special by giving your child 
a brand new box of prayer with crayons. You can help them make a clock to help learn how to tell time and make a shoe shine box too. And we have Sue and Bob. They've written their names on their shoe shine box. And that was Benny and Smith Incorporated on Madison Avenue in New York. feature that these old family circles have by Byron Fish, Just Like a Man. They're little daily anecdotes written by Mr. Fish. And then the little cartoon, this man smoking a pipe, had painted bird watchers meet Tuesdays and he's sitting on the sign that says city limits speed 25 miles an hour. And these two little boys are looking at him, bewildered. Here's a big ad for the $100,000 contest. So you can win that trip to Paris in a jet. They're going to take you in a jet, a swimming pool, a piano, a movie camera or projector, washer and a dryer, sewing machine, or a range. Simmered Savory Sauce Supreme Sauce Italiano mm. by Urbox Bouillon Cubes. Low in calories, high in flavor. So it's got butter, mushrooms, onion, green pepper, tomato paste, and a can of water, and a couple of bouillon cubes. Sounds good. Chicken a la queen from Pompeii and olive oil. And more people use sugarine. Sweeter than sugar, yet no food value. For four ounces, it was 75 cents. Isn't that expensive? I'm pretty sure it was saccharin. I tried to look it up. I did not have much luck. I don't, it's, it's, it has its place in history. I'm sure it was saccharin though. So, here we have the real dope movies. This movie had Anthony Perkins and Shirley Booth, and it was The Matchmaker. This had Carol Baker and Gregory Peck, The Big Country. And this one had Marilyn Maxwell and Jerry Lewis. Look at Jerry Lewis's face. And Rockabye Baby. Here's another contest by Betty Crocker. And you could win over $80,000 in prizes in your dream home or $35,000 in cash. There's the dream home. And they were asking you to name one of their test kitchens. They had all kinds of prizes. A, a, a Frigidaire, refrigerator, a dishwasher, a range, frying pans, but here's the contest ad. Here you would send it in a Minneapolis, and it says, please print or write clearly. And then you would have to also add, my grocer is name and address. You had to name the new Betty Crocker kitchen, and you also had to include two proofs of purchase. For Betty Crocker cake. Look at all the different flavors that they had. They had yellow, honey spice, gingerbread, chocolate malt. That one sounds good. Peanut delight, black walnut, angel food, lemon custard, angel food, confetti angel food, and then white doll's food and marble. I learned when I was trying, I tried to look up who won this and I was unsuccessful. But in the process of um, looking that up, I learned that General Mills, who owned Betty Crocker, moved its headquarters to Golden Valley, Minnesota in 1958, this year of this magazine. And they had seven different kitchens there and each of them represented an area of the United States. 
Then that got remodeled again in 2003. And it's probably been, they're probably going to remodel it again soon. Huh? That was 20 years ago. Here are little, it says uh, shortcuts to better housekeeping. And it's uh, little tips, new products you should know about. This is a polyethylene plastic double bucket to help you mop. It was a new invention. And look at this little table that you could fold up and then pull out when you need it. If you were having company and needed an extra table, and they give little tips that readers had sent in. This has to do with applique work because so many people sewed back then and made clothing and curtains. So Dust they have some tips on dusting Venetian blinds and washing baby diapers. Two things that people would have to do back then. Chores. We have cool jello add jello busy day dessert seven flavors it had well here's a few of them and what you could make top lemon dessert with a uh, mint jelly and a sprig of mint and this is strawberries and cream for a strawberry dessert this is butterscotch dessert with frosted cookies and this is marshmallows inside of chocolate they're not saying pudding they they're saying dessert it's they're making desserts out of it and spoon cherry preserves over vanilla dessert i love that ad that might be my fate no i like this ad too you could win one hundred and twenty-five thousand dollars on the aunt jemima quaker sweepstakes you could win a Cadillac. Wow. But a Sedan de Ville, a Continental, Merc 7, I think, huh? And, or an Imperial Southampton. 19, these are all uh, 1959 cars. You could win a TV, and that's what it would look like. Or all these different appliances. Mixers, toasters, percolators. This was from Quaker Oh, Send the names of the three recipes below in which you find these clue words. Strawberry preserves, syrup, and cinnamon. You'd have to look in the recipes. Is there an entry blank? No. Over 5,800, about 5,800 prizes. I guess you were just writing it on a piece of paper. But they had new perfect cornbread, heavenly coffee cake. Oh, that sounds good. School day pancakes and sausage. And a griddle. Raspberry waffle sundae. Hawaiian ham loaf and oatmeal and fruit blended. tomato flavor come alive and ketchup. Del Monte. Del Monte Chef's Dead with pineapple distilled vinegar. Look at that delicious little creation that they have there. With a piece of bacon and a sandwich maybe. Here are more entertainment clips up here. I to say this lady's name. I've never heard of her. Tang Tanya Elg? Was she from Sweden or something? And Glenn Ford in Imitation General. And then The Key starring Sophia Loren and William Holden. Here's the continuation of Just Like a Man. And here's an ad for Royal Pie Filling. This is lemon. They have a lemon meringue pie. All the flavor comes from real lemon. Lemony lemon pie in half the time. And a blue bonnet ad. So in these magazines, these celebrity photos and whatnot are never in color, but the ads sure are. They're they're in like almost technicolor. It's a beautiful, beautiful ad with the lady with her bonnet. 
looks like, cooks like, and tastes like the high price spread. They never mention the word butter. So this is two fine products of Standard Brands Incorporated. Hmm. Ooh. Ooh la la, things just took a little adult turn here. New look, new feel in lingerie. Lingerie is moving in a new color orbit with airy trimmings of lace, embroidery, and pretty ribbon. And I think everything on this page was under $10 that I looked at. They have the Grecian style shorty pajamas in sheer nylon. And a velvet ribbon trim that was under $9 by Kaiser. These petticoats have pink and blue embroidery and they were $9 by Munsing Wear. And the slip is by Munsing Wear too. Lavishly trimmed with lace with shoestring shoulder straps. And we have this more traditional looking nighty. And it's a trapeze shaped nightgown enriched with lace applique and satin ribbon. It was also $9. And this one is maybe even more fancy. But it was under $9. Kaiser again is the make. It's a fragile yoke of embroidered sheer. It was set on lace above the Empire Sash. This is an ad for Halo shampoo. Look at that beautiful shiny head of hair. The actor in this is Farley Granger. So it's up here, Farley Granger, star of stage, screen, and TV. Her hair has that look again look it's gleaming, isn't it? You can always tell a halo girl. You can tell by the shine of her hair. The magic glow of a halo girl goes with her everywhere. It glorifies as it cleans. That's a bold claim. I never knew anything about Farley Granger. I've heard of his name. His career spanned seven decades. And he was in... Two Alfred Hitchcock movies, Rope and Strangers on a Train. And he seemed like maybe he was a Hollywood rebel. Well, he was in Hollywood and he ended up going to New York City and being on Broadway. And the other thing I learned about him, well, he sure is cute, isn't he? He's dead, but um, he wrote a, um, a bed-hopping tell-all for interesting words. These are little prints that you could fill out the order form here. They were 50 cents each or three for a dollar. And they were large. They were 14 inches by 17 inches. You could frame them and put them in your house. Prints to captivate cat lovers. This one was investigation. This one was vanity, and this one was slumber. You would just send in the coupon to, where would you send it to? Family Circle, Grand Central Station. These people are having a party. And it looks like um, club crackers now. Hungry for a snack, or do you need a whole company tray? That's what the jar looked like. You see a person spreading it out. And they have olives and I don't know what they have in there. Pickle? More black olives and green olives. Cheese wisdom. This was an ad for Quick Permanent by Richard Hudnut. New, a permanent that's instantly wonderful because it's instantly washable. Look at that lovely lady with her yellow roses. Quick is the only wave you dare wash at once. I don't know about that. You can get a permanent and then wash your hair right away. It was only two dollars plus tax. Here's a story. Look at the cute drawing. Your money and your marriage. We see a husband while a bride and a groom and their faces are coins. If you can see the difference between the real value of money 
and its hidden meanings. It has for your husband and you, it's possible you need never quarrel about money again. I don't think that things are much different now. Well, things obviously are. The world is different, but I don't think the core issue of coming together as especially maybe a young couple, bride and groom, bride and bride, groom and groom, whatever you are, and uh, melding your financial life, what it's going to look like and how you're going to get there. The struggle is real, huh? Bringing home the weekly paycheck provides men, many men, um, with self-esteem as nourishing in its way as the bread and butter it buys for the family. Hmm. Success, if you are a man, means earning a decent living for your wife and children. How to get the house you, quote, can't afford. They are talking about DIY projects in this. Do-it-yourself can be tedious, exasperating, even painful, but it is still about as good a way as you are likely to find today to stretch your building dollars. A couple pages had gotten cut out of this magazine. I'm just going to disclose that because this, the lady um, probably found a couple ideas. I had to laugh, though, when I read this because now when you think of how will I get the house that I can't afford, you instantly might think of how can I get a loan that I'm either going to pay back or not pay back. But this is speaking to doing things yourself with these built-in bookcases and um, even finishing an upper level. They have a carport. See the cars down there? Top of the world feeling was gained by putting family space on an upper level. Built-in lighting retained spacious look after dark. And here is a peaceful retreat. Look at that view in the back with the forest and a, there's a bookcase. It says, natural pride of handyman makes a far from perfect job seem eminently satisfying. Complex work such as wiring and plumbing was left to specialties as required by building code. But a lot of this, these things, these people did themselves. Here's one of the things that they cut out. <laughs> she just cut out a picture built-in desks. We begin that beautiful forest in the background. Look at the clock. And then they put a mirror there to make the room bigger. An age-old truck. The need for privacy in childhood is indicated by Molly's current devotion to her cello. Behind her, is a low-cost storage wall of unfinished pieces that they finished themselves. And here's a house plan and a balcony on top of that home. Look at her octopus there. Practicing her chewing. I think there's many of each where somebody hasn't cut everything out. So... The maple pieces here, look at all the maple furniture, captain's chairs, round table, hutch, and settee are all good reproductions of early American furniture, authentic even to the handles on the buffet. And to add individuality as well as status to this dining area, there are a few almost antique and antique accessories. So that's another way to at that time, anyway. I don't know what people would feel about it now to make things look more expensive. Against a modern version of a traditional tiny checks wallpaper stands a truly beautiful low boy chest, which is a reproduction. And they have brass candle holders, a rocking chair, and they even have framed old wallpaper. 
that's interesting that they would do that. I just got some beautiful old wallpaper from an old house that we were at a sale at. I got the whole roll and I don't know what I'm going to do with it. I'll show it on a video. So this is traditionally yours on a budget. Look at that family. There's quite a, there's three kids, I think. My grandma had a couch like that. The lady has a yellow dress on. Look at their fancy lampshades. Kids are looking out the window. Here's dad. Their lace curtains. Thanks to prefabricated colonial houses and handsome low cost reproductions of early American furnishings, you can afford. A background that would make Betsy Ross feel at home. <laughs> oh, wow. Wow, look at this bedroom. A shifting frontier carried furniture a long way. Look at the bedroom. Look at this pink bedroom with the pink bedspread, pink walls. It's very Barbie, isn't it? Except we have just a traditional doll there with the lamp and flowers, little little sp spurts of red. These are sheets draped above the wall to make an improvised canopy. And here is a boy's room, let's say. It's a traditional apothecary type chest, a spool bed, a brace back chair. They make sturdy pieces for the boy's domain. Striped cafe curtains complete the room that is colonial but not cute. And this is the floor plan for this home, which is the Sunwood Model Home, showing us the locations of the rooms and the family. And the lady in a yellow dress again. It's not the same family, though, I don't think. It's less kids. Here's dad. And this maybe is mom and dad's room up here. A poster bed. It has a rocker and a braided rug and framed documents. Floor length cafe curtains. And the tailored brown cotton and the tie backs, which match. And then they have some yellow mums. Match the bedspread. I always love the illustrations that they give with the short stories that are included in these magazines. The short stories are often written by people that went on to be authors of books, sometimes famous books. This is called Second Guess. It's by Ann Sayer. Could Judith and Paul aware of their own mistakes, help 18-year-old Pat escape the pitfalls in marrying too young. This lady, Ann Sayer, was born in Milwaukee, and she put her husband through school to get his PhD with writing these short stories for different magazines. She, Ann Sayer, is famous for, in 1975, writing a biography on Rosalind Franklin, and her help, she was a British chemist, Rosalind Franklin was, and she made, it was, had a key role in the discovery of DNA, the structure of DNA. But in 1958, she was writing short stories. Paul said, you could take a day off from work tomorrow, Judy, and we could borrow the boat again. Hmm. She's thinking about it. In this day and age, she would be holding a phone, right? But she's holding a little pad of paper and a pen. Poor Man's Capitalist by Samuel W. Taylor. This was an interesting guy, Samuel W. Samuel W. Taylor. He was born in Provo, Utah, and he went. He was the, a member of the Church of the Latter Day Saints. He's an American novelist. His grandfather was the president of the LDS Church. 
And some of the short stories that he went on to write after this one were the basis of Disney's Flubber and the Absent-Minded Professor. But in this case, we have a yellow dress, young lady. This guy has got a yellow tie on, a traditional looking clock tower in the background. And it says, JJ had everything he needed to be a millionaire except money. And Polly decided to fix him up with that. This must be Polly, huh? A million potential millionaires are wrecked every year on the racks of romance, Polly quoted. Said JJ, I'd give a million for you any day. So another author who made his bread and butter money reading these short stories for the for the women's magazines in this case, but magazines in general. Father Knows Most by Isabel Nash. Ogden Nash's verse made the world smile. Here his daughter writes delightfully about him. And she reminisces about her growing up years in letter from her famous father. And here she is. As she listens to her father, poet Ogden Nash, as he tells it to her son there. And Ogden Nash was known for his kind of unconventional rhyming scheme schemes. And um, he wrote humorous poetry. And a lot of it was about animals. One was called the cow. One was called the duck or the fly. You can open that and read about him. Here are some sewing patterns. Sew these in Jersey for variety and color. Look at that little girl with her lip. I had a robe like that. It was pink. That was in the 70s, though. And they give these simplicity pattern numbers in case you want to in case you wanted to buy them. And the patterns were 35 cents. So we could make this robe for a little girl. Or um, this robe, which it says doubles as a hostess coat. It's ideal to wear during your hours of relaxation with its graceful lines. And then they have some dresses and suits as well. All, all to be made with jersey fabric. It's a tweed-like jersey that they're using for the suit. The pattern comes with or without the collar for the jacket. So this would be a simplicity. Jersey, the gentle fabric, so soft and comfortable to wear, so easy to care for makes each of these new pattern fashions. So they chose jersey and plain and novelty textures in autumn's liveliest colors, but they'll keep us guessing because they're black and white photos. Here's Mitzi Gaynor. I found myself and lost 40 pounds. By building faith in herself, this appealing young star got back to her size 10 figure. Her experience may help you. Let's see, Gator is alive as of today, um, September 21st, 2023, at 92 years old. And she was born in Chicago. She was in South Pacific, and there's no business like show business. She was a dancer and an actress. A loving husband is sweeter than candy. He is cute, says Mitzi of Jack Bean whose help in developing self-confidence led her to stardom in the 20th Century Fox's South Pacific. They look like a happy couple. So what are her, some, some of her um, keep slim suggestions? She's out in a garden with her rose bush there, and she's got garden glove on. Let's listen to these suggestions. The first one is keep busy, keep a schedule. You can do more housework in less time and find time for other things if you plan your day. 
get an early start and stop telling yourself you have too much to do. I do most of my own housework and I cook for my husband and myself besides keeping up with my career. You need to look it up. She never had kids, but it says, if you, when we have children, it will be my responsibility, not a nurse's, to bring up the children. So it seems like she had the intention of having children. She was married to this guy for a long, long, long time. They were married from 1954 to 2006, and I think it's when he, that's when the guy died. Work out a diet plan with your doctor. <laughs> Once you start on a diet, you can stick to it if you think, if you keep thinking about how attractive you're going to look. Oh boy. Spend a few minutes a day on exercise. If you don't like to do conditioning exercises, then please set aside a little time each day to take a walk. If you don't like walking, ride a bicycle, swim, roller skate, or take up dancing. If you have problems, just remember that sweet foods won't solve them. I beg to differ, Mitzi. That's just my own opinion sometimes. A cookie will make you feel better. It's just me, though. It's just me. Hand character with hand care. And then you have some tips here. Look at all the nail shapes. S square, wedge, pointed, knobby, and smooth. <laughs> Whatever the nail shape, File the tip of the nail to approximate the shape of the nail at the base. <laughs> Don't file the nail down to the cuticle at the sides. For nails, that's true, may break or tear. Curve the nail tip gently, starting just above the cuticle at the sides and shape the nails just slightly longer than the tip of the finger. Shape nails with an emery board and move the emery over the nail in one direction only. I never do that. It says don't back and wolf for file. It can cause the delicate nails to peel and crack at the tips. It does. I do it though. Uh, polishes are paler this year, so use a light or a bright shade. Keep your polished job for days by using a super durable cover coat and brushing it lightly over the tip of the nail to seal the polish each day. Smooth hand cream or lotion down the fingers and the back of the hand and keep going over the wrists all the way back to your elbows. Watch going barehanded to pull weeds or shoveling your garden. Instead, wear work gloves. Another thing that I'm guilty of not doing. I try to always take that extra minute to put gloves on, but I never do. I thought this looked so good. Golden dollar corn cakes. But you are literally cutting corn off of a cob to make them. It seems very time consuming, but look at that breakfast. With the sausages and the pretty measuring cups. It looks lovely. So you're starting with uh, fresh, sweet corn to make the little dollar cakes. You're getting the kernels off with a knife. And then you're removing the corn pulp from the holes by gently pressing ba the back of the knife down the length of the cob. Do not scrape cob, for this will loosen the holes. And you're beating some eggs until they're th thick and fluffy to make the cakes delicately light. And now you stir in the creamy golden pulp of the corn. Make sure it looks good. Golden dollar corn cakes. 12 ears of corn, 3 eggs, salt, pepper, and butter. That's pretty easy, isn't it? Not that. I don't want to make it though. 
Dreaming of a new fall wardrobe always meant a pretty coat with the bows. Nice few colors. Here is the mainstay of any wardrobe, separates. And this is a sweater blouse with a soft fur blend fabric and a tweed skirt. So the skirt is 15 and the sweater is, it was by Brownie, the company, and it was $13. The skirt was Jack Finn. This is a coat by Lassie Jr. and it's wool and it was $50. And it says it's unmistakably autumn 1958. Copper and green or green and red. Look at her hat and her gloves. And this is a trapeze coat made by Town Cliff with an E at the end. And it was $90. It has a wide collar slash pockets. And it came in tangerine, gold, red, royal, or black. And it was probably, it was made of wool and mohair. I was going to say it was probably made of wool, but it's wool and mohair. What you might like to do is just to throw every, out everything and start afresh, but that's not practical. What you can do is make your old wardrobe seem new. In these fresh fall fashions, even a few of them will do the trick. Use color. It's the big news this fall to tie old and new together. And there you are with an everything's new feeling. It says here for this outfit, prints now brighten the fashion scene throughout the year. The blues on sheath of sheer wool and rayon fully lined is ideal for afternoon wear. And that's by R and K under $20. And this, is a junior size two piece design by Vicki Vaughn. A chemise top, box pleated skirt are in acrylon and rayon. And this was under $15. It came in green, red, blue, and bittersweet, and it had pearl buttons. This came in turquoise, green, red, and orange. I love that coat. So here is our continuation of dreaming of a new fall wardrobe. This blouse is by Marlo, and it's a chemise style. It's dressy, isn't it? With a soft texture, under $12. This is by Ship and Shore, under $3, and it's cotton. And it came in different colors. They don't list them, otherwise I would read them. This is by Alice Stewart, under $8. It's an Oolan and wool jersey. A youthful chemise blouse. And then we have this beautiful suit. It's plaid. Look at the big buttons and the nice hat. She's got gloves and her shoes on. This was by R and R and K. $30, a Puritan collar. It was in royal or orange plaid. Patch pockets. A suit is a many splendored thing when supported by a bevy of blouses. Above, we show two in their informal moods. We have two ladies here. Look at these blouses. This is a demure blouse. You can wear it with a suit or a jumper. It's made of Dacron and it came in white or other colors. $8 by Alice Stewart. And this is worn with that up there. And it's a jersey over blouse. And this three-piece suit up here was $70. Guy La Roche for Duchess Royal was the designer. And it's a three-piece knit ensemble combining a skirt and a jacket. 
with the red jersey over blouse and the jacket was lined in red. The suit came in black and white or brown and beige. Oh, I bet you that one was pretty brown and beige. Oh, for fall. Ready on time dinners, smooth as clockwork. If getting every dish on the, of the meal ready on time is a problem in your house, try cooking with a plan. It's that simple. Let's see how simple it is. <laughs> here's what we mean, and here's how you do it. My husband will love this. This is dinner after church. We have honeydew oil. Here's the pl here's the place setting. So honeydew oil, lemon glaze pork roast with gourmet gravy, fluffy mashed potatoes, pimento sprouts, ground carrots and onions, jellied cranberry cubes. That seems easy enough. It seems like it's just cut up cranberry sauce. Peach cream stacks and coffee. That's that dinner. And yes, my husband would want that. This is the pot of gold dinner or pot o gold dinner. Mm. Beautiful. So what do we have here? Perky tomato baskets. They are perky. Golden nugget chicken. Toasted rice. That sounds yummy. Sesame butter sticks. Currant jelly. Ambrosia Bavarian. And tea. I'm sure they'll get the recipes after this. This one... This would go over well, the whole thing. This, I'm just going to say it, not so much, okay? This is um, the 50-minute dinner. 50 minutes. That's an odd number to just put out there. So they have a tangy appetizer with antipasto kebabs. You can barely see them down there. Looks like they have some tomato juice and a salad. Parsley cheese spaghetti with sautéed meat sticks. I don't know about that. Crusty bread, the mixed green salad, cinnamon pears, and toasted pound cake. They're rose-tinted pears. I don't know about those meat sticks. This is the cutest thing I think I've ever seen. This must have been a recurring supplement to this magazine because you can see the holes where you're meant to punch them out to put in your notebook. I did not. And this was a mother-child cookbook, another page for your cookbook. And it's so cute. This is satellite eggs. You know, space travel was on everybody's mind back then. The space race. You could send in your own recipe to be included in this and you could win $5. Boys and girls, it says send in your favorite recipes. Stephen says, because I like eggs very much, my mother taught me how to cook them. And that's very, very slowly. I like hot dogs too. So one day I put them together and made a satellite egg this way. So you're using a small frying pan and you're making a fried egg and then cutting up hot dogs to put around the edges of the white of the egg. And that is a satellite egg. Jello chiffon. And this was a chiffon pie filling. Mm. Strawberry chocolate and probably vanilla. Huh? No, it was lemon. It's yellow. You know what I'm thinking? They didn't have a vanilla? Hmm. I guess there's not such a thing as a vanilla cream pie, or is there? Anyway, Jello Chiffon, wonder of the dessert world. Now in chocolate. You just can't fail making that with that pie filling. 
Now here we have more of the house we can't afford, but in some black and white photos. Here we have a lady in her kitchen up here. What is she doing? The one piece kitchen center unit on the left has a stainless steel top and it incorporates cooking units, the sink, the dishwasher, and the storage space. And then she has a wooden storage stall, a storage unit, which they installed and finished with a built-in freezer. And this is a close-up of the built-in lighting on the home. And then we have a bathroom down there. They're calling this a car compartmental bath, which is one on each level, and they're stacked for plumbing economy. That's how it is in my house. The half bath's on top of the, or it's underneath the main bath. And they did their own cabinet work and installed the ceramic tile. Here we have the recipes for our dinners that we described. What's an ambrosia bavarian? Well, of course, one envelope of unflavored gelatin, sugar, instant coffee, salt, eggs, milk, vanilla, and heavy cream with toasted coconut. Here's a good ad. Now, this is not for Diet Pepsi because Diet Pepsi was in a laboratory somewhere, probably being invented in 1958. Maybe not. Who's going to know? Slim and trim with the light refreshment. These two look kind of like they're on a dude ranch. She's got on cowboy boots and looks like maybe riding pants and a teeny tiny little waist. And he's got on like a Daniel Boone fringed jacket. What are they up to, I wonder? Of course, her nails are painted red. Yeah. I looked this up and I think that Pepsi started putting less sugar in their soda. No matter what she wears, today's woman, woman shows nothing but the slimmest lines. The reason is simple. She follows the sensible trend towards lighter food and drink. It says it's reduced in calories, but they haven't put the sugar in it. That's how. Bird's eye serving ideas. They have bird's eye corn. And what's that? French. French fried potatoes. Flavor up your meals with those bird's eye products. And here we have Swan's Down Golden Pound Cake. Next. Oh, the different varieties. Orange coconut. Mm. Lemon flake. Banana. Apple butterscotch. And lemon chip. I think that says apple chip, but I can't see. That is a nice ad with the swan. And I bet you it was delicious. And was it General Mills? Yep, it was General Mills. Here's the recipes. Here's another, um, they made it the picture smaller, but here's another dinner plan. It was fish day dinner. Double treat cream soup, fisherman's pie with egg caper sauce, baked potatoes, celery peas, lemon nut pudding cake with a fluffy cheese topping and tea and milk. I don't know about that fisherman's pie. Oh, here's the recipe. Milk, butter, breadcrumbs, a can of salmon. This might not be too bad. Or you could put in tuna fish. And then parsley, lemon juice, onion, salt, and pepper. Okay, that's not that bad. I just pictured like fish heads and a pie crust. I bet you it's not. It's, um, I bet you it's pretty good. Here's a Heinz ad. No other ketchup tastes like Heinz, and they made pork and beans too. They have three new ideas in an unusual, easy to fix supper. This was a French cassoulet made with pork and beans. 
with bacon and onion and garlic. Yes, my crew would love that. Of course, you're putting in some Heinz ketchup. I don't know about the pickled carrot sticks, though. Mm, I don't know. They might like that. You're just covering the carrots with the liquid from Heinz. Cucumber pickles. Let's see the jar there. Look at that little um, cartoon that they added in here. There's a St. Bernard dog with the barrel around his neck like you see get, uh, doing a rescue in the Alps. And they're in the frozen food department. And the grocer's telling this lady, biggest frozen food department in town. Like they're going to have to send the dog out on a search mission for you. And the other recipe was a honey toasted salad with Heinz cider vinegar. That does sound good. Just greens, well chilled, but you're putting fruit in there with salt and salad oil and apple cider vinegar. That sounds pretty good. Here's a bell telephone ad. The telephone way to a happier day. Let me see this lady taking a break with her apron on, calling somebody. Try it today when dishes are done, beds made, clothes in the washer. You've earned a break. So relax a little and pick up the telephone. Enjoy a cheerful visit with a friend or a loved one. It's fun to phone. These ads are in a lot of these old magazines. And here's an ad for Bull Bell. This emblem is your guarantee of satisfaction. And we see three young ladies here in their Blue Bell outfits. It says made to be matched. $1.98 to $4.98. Prints, plaids, solids, stripes, all color cued to go together. Priced so low, you'll want several. Johnson Hicks ad you can send away for manual of home care. Was it free? Yep. Yeah. Of course, they were advertising your Johnson Wax, and they made products to clean all types of surfaces in your home. Here's Mitzi's, uh, Mitzi Gaynor's diet. So this is her 1,000 calorie a day diet. Breakfast, half, half of a grapefruit, two eggs, and skim milk. Lunch, a small hamburger steak or a piece of chicken. That's it. Dinner, a small steak with sliced tomatoes and spinach. That's the skinny Mitzi diet. Sleep away tension on the Englander Tension Ease mattress. No matter how you sleep. And they show three people in different positions, hopefully having a good night's sleep. The only firm mattress with the extra level of Tension Ease coils. There's a cool La Choy in. La Choy homemade chow mein in 20 minutes. Butter, lean pork, onion, celery, lachoy bean sprouts. Mm -hmm. You had to thicken it up with lachoy soy sauce, lachoy brown sauce, sugar, corn, starch, and water. These are some of the different products that they had. That was from Archibald, Ohio. Archibald, Ohio. I had to look that up. They're still there. But to reduce overhead costs and maintain profitability during World War II, the management decided to relocate La Choy, the company, from its facility in Detroit to Archbold, Ohio. That was in 1942. This brand was purchased in 1990 from Beatrice Foods by Conagra. But if a, something still comes up when you Google it in Archbold, Ohio. Where did it 
Start. In 1937, the company built its first manufacturing facility in Detroit. That's, I wonder where it was. That's where I'm from. Hmm. And then, um, I never knew this either. Jim Henson from 1965 to 1967 created a full-bodied Muppet character called Delbert the Lachoy Dragon for ads. Um, I'll look it up and put a picture. I gotta write it out. Anyway, I can read about that all day. Ooh, this is Diet Delight. No, um, look at Sweetened with sucaro. That, that's not good. They don't make this anymore. They need all kinds of things. All types of fruits, plums, peaches, fruit cocktail. Diet delight. Luscious fruits from the tree to you. They're low in calories too because they're sweetened with sucaro. These peaches have 240 fewer calories than the fruits packed the regular way. And there's a lot of asterisks. <laughs> and um, what not? That was from San Jose, California. And here's, not to be overlooked, the continuation of our marriage and money article. And it says how to deal with overspending used as an escape. Money gives the upper hand. The earning wife. How to deal with the addition of to another income. Who's this? Laura Lee Parrott. Who were you? This is an ad for Lowry's garlic spread. And there was her recipe for garlic bread. Oh, the lady that wrote this article, this might have been an excerpt from her book, The Many Faces of Money by Edith G. Nicer. It was actually a pamphlet. You could send a quarter to Family Circle and they would send it to you. Look at that Hills Brothers ad. Hills Brothers Instant Coffee. The first instant, instant coffee that smells like coffee and tastes the way good coffee should. Look at those. It swirls up to the lady's nose. And look at her white hair. Big, big, red circle. It's different little art, uh, pamphlets that you could send for. Exploration of Space Guide. Farm animal prints for a child's room. There's all kinds of things. So those were prints. And here's a makeup color kit and guide, a cookbook, a gardening book, a better handwriting pamphlet, guidance for children who stutter, different prints that you could frame and hang up in your home. No More Tears from Soap in the Eyes, Johnson's Baby Shampoo. There's ads in these old magazines that have to do with uh, feminine, marital feminine hygiene. I'm just going to leave it at that. That's an ad. <laughs> it must have been a big deal back then but they made it look like an article. They never put a picture or anything. Here's them reminding us about the $100,000 contest still. Here's a little cartoon. There's a spaceship going up to the stars, but look, the stars are just hanging from, it looks like ribbons. And it says, the quote says, I think we should just keep our mouths shut about this when we get back. Maybe that it's all just Stars hanging from strings up there, huh? You see the rocket ship going whoosh up into the sky. Now a talc deodorant for all over body protection. April showers deodorant talc. Here's a tonette perm. Ooh. 
so cute. It looks like it's everything you ever wanted in a children's permanent. And here are three recipients of that four times faster. She doesn't look real happy, does she? She looks pretty with her bow. It's easier for mothers because it's convenient and snarl free curls. Your little girl will have soft, shiny, easy to comb curls that last for months and months. I didn't know that giving your children a permanent was a thing back then. Here is We Walker Shoes ad. It says, well, bust my bubbles. We Walker Shoes do wash easily. There's an air filter ad. Here's a little addition here by Robert S. Kerr, a thought starter. It's easier to get ulcers from what's eating you than from what you eat. That's true. Here's another sanitary ad, a, a hygienic powder. There's a young man with these two girls. Okay, it's called Quest. Safe and medically approved. Okay, well, I wonder what was in it, you know? Confessions of an Insomniac by Dor Dora Pantel. Do you toss and turn half the night? Consider the hard-won cure offered by a fellow sufferer. I'll give a list of suggestions on the next page for your insomnia. But look at how cute that is, the border. It's a little sheep, counting sheep. What's this little guy's problem? When you've kissed him to make it better, use new Unguatine to make it well for all cuts, scrapes, and burns, all injuries. Poor little guy got hurt. Unguatine. They have a laxative. Yeah, it's a bottle sterilization. Some more patterns. Next, gelatin ad. Was a, unflavored gelatin was featured so prominently in self-care and recipes back then. Here are the insomniac rules. Okay, the first rule is get rid of your conditioning about the eight to nine hours of sleep that you think you need. You may not. You may need more than that. Number two, put away the clock, hide it, bury it, break it if necessary. And remember, it's the quality of your sleep, not the quantity that really counts. Number three, do what you feel like doing when you can't sleep. You may as well. I don't know about that. Four, worry your problems through at night if you feel like worrying. Hmm. But take some concrete step toward their solution. The calm you achieve afterward will send you to sleep like a contented baby. Hmm. Five, if you don't know what's worrying you, do a little probing. You've got to face it sometime. The sooner, the better. Number six, if you haven't a thing to worry about and still can't sleep, find something. I don't know about this advice. When you start thinking about the stamp you must have or about the speech you're going to make, you'll sleep. Hmm. Activity and sleeplessness are highly incompatible. If you're busy doing something, your insomnia will go quietly. What do you think about that advice? I don't know. What's the little thing? Look at these little cartoons are cute. We have a couple here. It's reading a book and it says what every boy should know. And he says to his wife, I'm not sure we ought to give this book to Junior. Some of it is news to me. <laughs> uh, for the Muscular Dystrophy Association of America, signed by Jerry Lewis, a plea from Jerry Lewis, help save his life. And here we have Alan Kowalski. In, in his wheelchair, and they were asking for a donation to their association. 
B is for birthday suit. Look at a little baby. <laughs> Q-tips. The box for you is blue. Easy available in Canada. Made of Q-tips, own silkenized cotton. Play murder, my child, and they have, I presume, a child dressed up as a cowboy. And Dorothy Curtis, RN, is talking about playing with guns. The little boys, I mean, maybe little girls too, playing with guns and her opinions on whether or not that should happen. This little clip in there is a thought starter by Bertrand Russell, who was a Welsh mathematician. He was a Nobel Prize winner. And this is his thought starter. At least half of the sins of mankind are caused by the fear of boredom. Look at this little baby in the tub. A swish, a squeeze, oh cello, vacuums clean. No other leading sponge absorbs so fast, yet lasts so long. And he's scrubbing up the tub. It might be a girl. And they have their, their little rubber ducky. And it's a General Mills product. Safe, soft, and sanitary. Crispy crackers. Delicious eating with new crispy flavors. And they have a dip recipe. Oh, no, they don't. They have a dip there. They each say crispy on there. Do they still? I don't know. Sunshine. Boy, they're really promoting that contest and how easy it is to enter and how easy it is to win. Serve sweet corn on the cob or off. Look at this guy. He's going to eat it. Corn zucchini scallop. Summer corn saute, golden corn pudding. Look at that corn soaked in milk. Cooked corn fresh picked on the cob in simmering water, or you can bake it in milk. I've never done that. Oven roasted or grill it outside. Serve it hot, hot with lavish buttering. Have you ever baked corn on the cob in milk? It sounds delicious. Let me show the different ways to roast it. I've never even heard of such a thing. Good cooks use brooks with hamburgers. Here's the ketchup with a nice bite to it. From Brooks Foods Incorporated in Collinsville, Illinois. Is a tangy ketchup. Here are our recipes. And here is one of my favorite ads, the double mint gum ad that always has uh, a dessert. And today we have double chocolate brownies. Healthful daily chewing of Wrigley Spearmint Gum helps lessen nervous tension. There you go. And besides, they all love it. It tastes so good, it lasts so long, and it costs so little. And then they always have a recipe. I don't know why. They're telling you to make the brownies from a mix and add nuts. As the brownies cool, lightly press into top thick squares of sweet chocolate. The Playmate by Welsh. Oh, a little exerciser. Tums. A little pot cleaner and a scour cloth, bunions, a bunion aid there. Here are a couple of little poems from uh, Agda Nash. Little notes that he had sent his daughter. He had sent her this note from Michigan. Uh, uh, no, from Chicago. On the shores of Lake Michigan, I cut into white fish again, and it's simply delish again. Love, Daddy. Oh, how sweet that she shared this with the readers of Family Circle. This was from uh, Des Moines. 
I test my bath before I sit to keep my to keep my stern from tingling. Then the moment I loll up into it, the telephone starts jingling. Isn't that the truth? They're very sweet. This is Sammy Flush. Do this twice a week to make your toilet bowl the cleanest spot in the house. Sammy Flush. Do they still make that, I wonder? I don't know. Ooh, your baking powder, the heart of any cake recipe, gravy master. Mm -mm. I get lollipops dog candy every day. Dogs drool for lollipops, and guess what? Cats love them too. And this lollipop, barbecue smoke. Another contest ad. They're really, really pushing that. Dr. Scholl's a hay fever. Here's a health nut sleeper. Black and white photo, but the child has a pink sleep on, and so does the doll. You could send away for that health net doll sleeper. So you would send a dollar to Knoxville, Tennessee for each doll sleeper that you wanted to order. All kinds of things. I thought this was a good one. You could order a rhythm calendar because feminine rhythm means so much. This was in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Let this rhythm calendar be your guide in determining when the fertile and sterile days will most likely occur. It, don't worry, it will arrive in a plain envelope. A butter dish, the Christmas card, job that are, is so often advertised in these women's magazines to sell cards in your spare time. Julia Lee writes meat storage primer, and they show all of the ways to store meat in a refrigerator freezer or fresh or in a deep freezer. And the last ads is for gold metal flour. The flour of the wheat makes a flour of a popover. Don't those popovers look beautiful? And they are in front of a field of daffodils. No, they're not daffodils. They are yellow. They're tulips. Yellow tulips. Bake it better with gold metal. The kitchen tested flour. And here's the recipe for the popovers. It's pretty simple. Flour, salt, milk, and eggs. I thought they were daffodils because they were yellow, but they're tulips. Winston tastes good. This is the back of the ad. It's what's up front that counts. It tastes good like a cigarette should. This reminds me of Don Draper. I don't know why. It just sounds like something like those Mad Men ad guys were. All smoking, trying to figure out a cute little rhyme for Winston. In the red and white box. Thank you for reading the September 1958 Family Circle with me. I had a little bouquet today to put with our magazine and I forgot all about it <laughs> until too late. But anyway, I hope you had fun reading it with me. Thank you for watching. Bye.